Better start the recording. Okay, very good. Whenever I'm looking into a new program or a new idea, uh, just a new concept, uh, the first question that I ask is, you know, how does this apply to me? You know, is this for me? Is it something that uh, matters in my universe? And uh, you may be asking yourselves the same thing. So I'm going to uh, submit that uh, probably, yeah. Okay, uh, let's just check though. Uh, have you been concerned with how to protect yourself from loss? If so, then yeah, uh, this this program, this idea is for you. Uh, do you like to take income from stocks? I know that a lot of you have done covered calls in the past. In fact, in just a moment, we're going to do a little poll here and find out what kinds of trading uh, everybody does. Okay, um, <clears throat> so if you like to take income from stocks, yes, this, this is an idea for you. Uh, but have you been disappointed by the ability, uh, by, by the lack of ability of cover calls trades, for example, to help you participate in growth? For example, when you sell a covered call, what you're doing is you're agreeing to take less if the stock decides to blow up. If the stock goes up, say you sell a uh, covered call at the $25 strike and the stock goes to 30 or 35 or 50 or 100 you're not going to be able to participate in that upside. But if you would like to be able to participate in the upside, that would be wonderful. Okay. And finally, uh, if, uh, if you've ever wondered, geez, is there a way for me to remove risk? In fact, remove all risk from trading uh, a particular stock or, or uh, position. Well, I'm not going to say <clears throat> that that's something that you can do every time, but I am going to say that it's not a unicorn. It's not something that you just hear about and can't do. Uh, we are in the business of teaching folks how to bulletproof uh, stocks. Okay, good. Uh, Mike says, audio really bad. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, Romick says, audio problem. Greg says, you're very quiet. I, I do uh, apologize there, folks. My, whatever, for whatever reason, my uh, microphone is uh, mal malfunctioning, my good microphone, and so I'm using a uh, uh, one that's not as good, okay? Just breaking up, says Jim. Okay, uh, Joe, we're going to do our goodest here to get that solved. Uh, real quick, let me just uh, ask a poll here. And the poll is all about uh, what kinds of trading are you doing now, okay? And while you're filling that poll out, I'll see if I can get that audio thing figured out, okay? Use the new hardware. Yeah. Let's try again. Sound check. Okie dokie. Okay, folks, uh, hopefully you can hear me better. I sure hope you, you can. Uh, please uh, uh, text in and let, let me know uh, if it's doing better. Better says Richard. Very good. Okay. Mike says audio is better. Juan, Romic, Tarek, and Jill. Mucho better, says Jill. Okay. I'm mucho glad to hear that. All right. So let's uh, – oh, wow. We've got uh, piles and piles now. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and, and uh, take a look at your your poll results, okay? Uh, what kinds of uh, options trading or trading we're doing now, okay? And uh, I'll go ahead and, and share that. 11% say that they're not doing options or they're new to options. 56%, uh, the biggest number that replied, are doing covered calls or their cousin, naked puts, okay? And then 39%, we have a tie, 39% doing long calls or puts and 39% doing spread trades. And then we've got 6% uh, of you that are living pretty rich, uh, <laughs> living uh, on the edge there doing naked calls. Now, uh, I, I often I like to say that there's nothing more dangerous than selling a, a naked call except perhaps – selling two naked calls, all right? So, uh, but uh, we're going to be talking about how to uh, take this, uh, this idea of uh, uh, selling calls for income and do away with the problems that go along with it, okay? All right, so uh, here we are. I'm going to jump into what is called the radioactive profit machine, okay? The radioactive profit machine, and that is a... Uh, 
um, unique variation of the traditional married put play. Okay, and we're going to feature income method number six, which is a riskless spread trade. You heard me right. I said riskless spread trade. Uh, you'll you'll have to see. Okay, uh, the context in which I do it is what provides for this spread trade to become riskless. Okay, but it's a way to create income but not limit your upside growth potential. And I'll be showing this and sharing this with today's um, stock. Okay, In fact, uh, if any of you have some stocks that you happen to be in now that you'd like to share, uh, you know, for example, share the stock that you're in, the uh, uh, stock symbol and the, uh, what do you call the uh, uh, cost basis at which you got in, um, I will show you how you might be able to protect your stock and get paid to do it, and that's kind of exciting. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. This webinar is going to introduce a new and better way to trade: how to cut your losers short, let your winners run, and get paid while doing it. Okay. All right. So we've already taken a look at what kinds of options trading folks are doing. What I'd like to do is just ask a very simple, very honest question, and that is, how's that working out for you? Okay, how's that working out for you? And um, you, you may uh, choose from this from this uh, list of different possibilities. Maybe you picked more winners than losers and won last year. Okay, maybe you picked more losers than winners and lost. Maybe you picked more winners than losers but still managed to lose money, and that's a problem. Okay, but it's a more common problem than you might think. Or might you be in that elite club of folks that even though they pick losers more often than winners, they still make money, okay? And uh, perhaps uh, you might be frustrated and ready to quit just to stop the hemorrhaging. If that's the case, uh, let us know also, okay? All right. Now, um, by the way, don't uh, worry. I'm not going to share your name. I'm not going to pick on you. I'm not going to say, oh, Nancy lost, you know. I'm not going to say, oh, Rod, Rod is our real winner here today. I'm, I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to uh, discuss the differences here. And, uh, wow, this is interesting. It, it starts uh, at the top with the most common and kind of tapers out as we go. Okay, I'm going to leave that poll up for another three seconds, two seconds, one second. I'm going to close the poll and share the results. Okay. So 50% picked more winners than losers and managed to win, so that is actually very high. It's a high number of folks uh, that have done well last year, and uh, congratulations. Normally in this category, I see about 20% or so, so we've got some really savvy traders. Good for you. 17% picked more losers than winners and lost last year, but here's a real concern. Look at this. 25% picked more winners than losers but still managed to lose money. Not cool, okay? I'm not saying you're not cool. I'm just saying that's not a cool situation. That's not the way that we want to uh, proceed, is it? Okay? <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm right more often than I'm wrong, but uh, but I'm still losing money. Not good. But look at this. We had a minority. We had 8% kind of reversed that. What they did was they picked more, more losers than winners. They were wrong more often than they were right as far as their picks, but still managed to make money. Now, guys, gals, I'm going to say that that is the holy grail of trading. Not necessarily the picking of losers, okay? That's not the holy grail, okay? But the fact that you can win even if you're lousy at picking stocks, that is the holy grail, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to just pop into the questions thing just so I can see uh, if uh, – if I'm losing you, okay, everybody can hear me. Audio not good, it varies. Sorry about that, Mike. Intermittent audio problem. I, I don't know what to do. I'm not a tech guy. Not Don't know how to fix that, but I'll do my very best here today with you, okay? All right, so Romic has NKE. Okay, now, says Mike, good. Uh, NKE at a uh, uh, level of uh, $98.14, and he's also got CVS at uh, 90.81. Romic, I'm going to come back to those uh, examples, and I'm going to show how you might be able to get paid to bulletproof your stock. Okay, kind of an interesting deal. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's move ahead here. I'm going to talk to you about my good friend Mike Chepka. Okay, Mike Chepka is now the director of options education over at Power Options. 
and uh, I was a customer of Power Options uh, oh about eight nine years ago. Um, was a uh, customer for uh, quite a period of time, and uh, during my tenure as as a customer there, I called in and I asked, "Hey, look, you know, I'm trying to find married put positions, but I need a very special." Um, parameter okay or, or I need special parameters it's not like a normal married put position it's completely different can you help me and Mike looked at what my setup was and he says um, mr. Frankenberg <laughs> this is uh, uh, kind of interesting I see what you're trying to do you're gonna be able to keep your losses down to 5% or less but I just don't see how you're gonna actually make money you know, I don't see how you're going to be able to make money with this setup. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> Mike, why don't you join me? Why don't you come to one of my seminars, my webinars? And I uh, invited him to come to one of these webinars just like what you're doing right now. And a uh, funny thing happened for Mike. Mike had been impacted by losses. He had done cover calls trading like a lot of you. Uh, he had done spread trading. He had done condors and butterflies and and uh, calendar spreads, you know, being the options education director and uh, having access to the tools at Power Options, he had done almost every strategy that's available, okay, bull put spreads and bear call spreads and so forth, collars, and, and uh, anyway, his own trading had <clears throat> been impacted by losses. And so he was intrigued, he was looking at my setup and said, you know, Maybe, maybe this will work for me because uh, I, I was demonstrating the ability to, even if I picked wrong, not lose any more than single digit percents. And 5% was really the, the upper range. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was able to keep losses down very, very low. So here's what he did uh, he decided to start trading my way. And in 2008, when there was an extreme crash, for the year, even though he was long stock for the entire year, he posted a loss. This is actually inaccurate. I, I thought it was one and a half percent, and he, he corrected me uh, here recently. He said, "Now, Kurt, it was it was more like six tenths of one percent." Okay, so wh whatever it was, it certainly uh, beats the living snot out of losing forty percent. Mike lost, let's say one and a half percent, or let's say six tenths of one percent. Mike lost less than two percent of his of his uh, capital trading long stock in 2008. What that means is he's got most of his marbles still left when the market bottoms in 2009, March 2009, and he's long stock, and he's continuing to buy stock. And uh, so anyhow, long story short, uh, Mike did struggle with options at first, but he's gotten control. He's had double-digit gains now for, uh, you know, 2009. 2010, 2011, 2012, 13, 14, and he's on track now for double-digit gains in uh, 2015. Okay, so uh, can the system be taught? Yes. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into just a quick financial fable, and um, uh, this is going to show you a little bit about what the problem really is. Okay, the 40 PhDs and the Martingale. Well, uh, 40 PhDs were given this game by a man named Ralph Vince, a legendary trading coach. He gave them even money odds, okay, but 60% chance of winning. Now that is a very winnable game, okay? 60% chance of winning each play. He's, uh, he gave them a thousand virtual dollars each, not real dollars, but a thousand virtual dollars each, and said, okay, you know, it's going to be random, 60% uh, in your favor, but random. But over time, over a hundred plays, do you think you could win this? Do you think you could win this if you had a 60% chance of winning each play and even money return? Okay. Now, most of these PhDs, some very, very bright people, had their butts handed to them. <laughs> they got killed. Okay. And when I say most, what I mean is out of 40, 38 lost money. That's 95%. 95% of the people, the very bright people that Ralph Vince exposed uh, to this game, lost. Okay, and this is a game that uh, a fifth grader could win. So what happened, uh, by the way, I've got the Martingale, Martingale principle is uh, also called gambler's ruin. 
and I've got the Martingale here personified or, or monsterified. Okay, he's got dollar bills for scales and he's hungry for your money. Okay, and uh, he he was given or giving a game with an expectancy of 0 0.20. And what that means is for every dollar that you wager in this game, you should earn 20 cents. Now that beats the, the living snot out of uh, Vegas. For example, when you have a um, when you play against the the house, you're going to have a negative expectancy. But this was the expectancy that he had. Every dollar that's bet, twenty cents is what you should win. Okay, but that's not how it worked out. And the reason that it didn't work out is that most of the players use no rhyme or reason to their betting. Maybe they bet a few times and win. And then being encouraged by this, they would increase their bet size and, oh, by chance, now we lost, okay? But then they became conservative again <laughs> when they were winning, so they, they weren't winning as much. And, and really, 38 out of 40 of these traders lost money. Some of them lost it all in this game, okay? Now, out of the 40 PhDs, there were two, and I actually don't know the results, but what I'm going to do is just fictionalize some results here. One of them might have been conservative and decided, okay, I'm going to bet $10. Out of my $1,000 pot, I'm just going to bet $10 all 100 times, okay? Well, with a 60% chance of winning each time, if it, if it worked out to 60 wins, he'd make $600, right? 60 wins times $10 is $600, but he'd also lose 40 times, so 40 losses times $10 is 400, so that would be 600 minus 400, or $200 profit, which is a 20% profit on your $1,000 stake. Now, another of our players might have uh, figured, you know what, I don't think I'm going to get 10 losses in a row at the very beginning of my 100 plays. So if I don't get 10 losses in a row, especially since I've got a 60% chance of winning each time, if I don't think I'm going to get 10 losses in a row, I'll bet one-tenth. I'll bet $100 each time. Well, here's what her setup would be. Her outcome would be $6,000 in winnings minus $4,000 in losses or $2,000. Now, that's beginning with 1000 bucks, so that's a 200% profit. Pretty cool. Now, here's the thing. The reason that I'm sharing this with you is because we haven't spoken at all about picking stocks. We haven't spoken at all about timing trades. We've talked about simply money management. All of these players, all 40 of them, had the same opportunity. It's like they were all playing the same market. But some of them got their butts handed to them, and some of them were victorious. Why? It didn't have anything to do with what they were choosing or when they were choosing to get in and out. It had everything to do with how much they were risking. The only difference was position sizing. In this example, it's the only thing that the difference between failure and success could have been. Okay, So more important than choosing a strategy with a positive expectancy, more important than that is the proper use of position sizing. And this is foundational, but most traders have never even heard of it. And folks that have heard of it don't know how to practice it correctly. Okay? Now, uh, this is the equation that you would use to find out what's the ideal amount of your bankroll that you should bet every time. And if you look back at your history, this is going to be different for everybody here, right? The numbers that we'd plug into these you know, letters <laughs> are going to be different for everyone. Some of you pick winners more often than losers. Some of you pick losers more often than winners. But all of you are able to use this equation to find out how much you ought to be betting for the best example or for the best payout. Okay. Now, this uh, involves some really deep math, and uh, uh, I'm actually showing the, the, the proof for this equation up here. Okay, but um, uh, what's what's important? Every one of you has a different starting point on this. Okay, but what's important is to find out what is the ideal amount that you should be betting. In this particular example, the ideal amount for uh, for our players to bet is 20% of your bankroll. So that's actually more aggressive than either of our winners in this uh, example. 
all right? Um, the return is respectable <laughs> by comparison. Okay, if you had 60 wins and 40 losses and you were betting each time you were betting 20% uh, of whatever you had left, uh, you'd end up with a 648% return. Not shabby, okay? All right. So it, it seems that we have a lot to learn from the story of the three bears. You know, if you bet too much, you're going to end up bankrupt like 38 of 40 PhDs did in a, a very winnable game. But if you bet too little, you're going to have too conservative a return. Okay, even if you are a winner, you're not going to be a very big winner. Okay, but when you find the correct position sizing, the correct amount to put into your plays, and you begin to roll that, you begin to compound that, now we've got something worth writing home about. Okay, so that's that's kind of my uh, financial fable. It's the thing that I wanted to start out with. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to find how to apply this to real life trading okay it's a nice example but how do we apply this uh, for real okay all right so uh, real quick I'm gonna do another poll I just want to make sure everybody's awake okay real quick just another poll okay and uh, here's a simple game okay what if you could make a hundred percent return when you're right but uh, not lose everything only lose 50% when you're wrong, okay? Uh, but you happen to be wrong more often than right, <laughs> okay? But what if you could set up a game like this? Would it be possible to win this? What do you think, okay? What do you think? I'm just going to give this as a possibility. I want to have everybody vote, all right? What do you think is going to happen here? Can you win this game? Okay, letting that poll populate. We've got uh, quite a bit of answers already. Is it likely that you're going to win? Is it unlikely that you're going to win? Is there a way to work this out? Who knows? Okay, all right, let me leave that poll up for about another mm, 10 seconds or so while I pull up the resources tab on radioactivetrain.com. We're going to get to brass tacks right after I show you the trade simulator tool. We're going to get to brass tacks here. I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a structure where you can't lose more than single digit percents, but you can leave your upside open and take income. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll now as I promised I would. Okay. So 11% uh, believe that 50% uh, losses, you know, that's going to offset your 100% gain. You know, if you double your money, but then you cut it in half, double your money, then cut it in half. If you lose more often than you win, you'll never get ahead, right? Okay. So that's what 11% say. 39% say, <clears throat> well, you know, maybe it is possible to win, but it's highly unlikely because the 60% probability of loss stacks the deck against me. We showed a 60% probability of gain and how you could certainly win that game, even though some folks lost at it, right? Um, but what if there's a 60% probability against you? Oh, geez. Okay. But 50% believe, I honestly think there's a way to make this work out for me. Okay, well, let's take a look. Okay, here we are on the resources tab on radioactivetrain.com, and one of the resources, uh, besides a free two-week trial to power options, okay, one of the resources is a trade simulator tool. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in the exact parameters I just gave you. Okay. It'll take a second to pull up, but this is a, a wonderful tool that you can use to uh, uh, to evaluate the way that you're trading now. Okay, you can take your average win and your average loss, and, and how often you win versus how often you lose. Okay, here we're going to make it a 60% probability of loss. Okay, whoops, hang on. 60% probability of a loss. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the simulation. It just ran the sim simulation. I'm going to scroll down and see what happened. Oh, we got bankrupt after 10 trades. Well, you know what? Maybe that's not going to be the outcome every time. Let's try it again. It's random, you know. Yeah, now we're bankrupt. Whenever that balance falls below 250 $250, it considers you bankrupt. Okay, again, $10,000 took 14 trades to bankrupt us. Uh, this time, 60 trades. Look at that. 
60 trades to bankrupt us. And uh, here's the deal. At one point, we've got $10,000. At one point, we've rolled it up to 640000 And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, that's where I'd get out. That's where I'd stop trading. Would you? <laughs> Would you really? I mean, if if you had turned ten thousand dollars into six hundred and forty thousand, you'd probably believe you had a winning system, okay? But in the end, if you if you change nothing about it, in the end, you'd end up bankrupt, okay? Now, here's what I'm going to do. Rather than continuing to just go bankrupt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change just one thing about this. I'm going to change the leverage. Instead of investing 100% of our uh, winnings or our losses, instead of uh, investing 100% of our pot, what we're going to do is just scale it down to 10, 10%. Oh, and look, now we've had 50% uh, uh, winners, 50% losses, took $10,000 and rolled it up into $90,000. What if we lose more often than we win? Well, with a 60% probability of a loss, it's likely that we're going to lose 60 times out of 100, right? But look at what happened. Even with strings of losers, and even with more losses and wins, we've doubled our money. See, this is what I mean by position sizing. Was there any difference in the uh, probability, the payout, or the losses? No. But there was a difference in the outcome because of how much we were willing to risk. Okay? So, since that is the one thing that we can control, how much we're going to risk why don't we make sure that we stack the deck that way? So here's a quick overview of how it works, okay, how the radioactive profit machine works. If we're buying stock, and if the stock has the, the possibility of going up or down, we could lose, well, potentially everything, and uh, we could also gain, perhaps, you know, theoretically, an infinite amount, okay? All right, now it's it's uh, it's really going to probably be somewhere in between. <laughs> it's probably not going to be infinite, right? And it's also probably not going to be zero, although that does happen. Sometimes folks uh, invest in stocks and they they uh, lose everything. Okay, so here's one popular solution. One popular solution for reducing the risk is to accept a small premium while you're holding the stock. Okay, so let's say this dotted line is your cost basis. We're going to reduce that cost basis. Let's say that the bottom line, what we could lose is we could lose everything. Well, guess what? If we reduce our cost basis a little by taking a credit from a covered call, we're going to also make it so that we can't lose everything. We can just lose most of everything. Does that make sense? Okay. What's our trade-off for this? Well, our trade-off is that if the stock goes up, we don't get to take advantage of the upside. All right? If the stock doubles – well, we only get our 3 or 5% or whatever it is, okay? All right, so what my idea is and uh, what I've been proving with real money and uh, uh, for more than a decade and, and what my students have been proving is this. Rather than uh, reducing the cost basis at the get-go, we're going to actually add to the cost basis. We're going we're gonna to buy stock insurance. So we bought stock. We're going to also buy stock insurance. And we're going to limit how much we can possibly lose, right? But um, at the same time, still leave our upside open. And that's really cutting your losers short and letting your winners run. That's that's really practicing that uh, that trader's maxim. Now, here's the thing: every stock, every uh, instrument okay that you can invest in has its own risk and reward profile it has its own volatility signature but um, let's say you've got a stock that uh, could go up uh, by 15 percent in the next few weeks or it could go down by 15 percent in the next few weeks or or months well uh, here's your cost basis okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, uh, when you buy your put option you may reduce your winnings by a little bit, okay? By getting a put option to limit how much you can lose, all right, you uh, still leave your upside open, though you do reduce it, okay? But we're going to do something very interesting with this. What happens is, let's say that instead of 15%, we've spent 5% on our put, so all we can make is 10%. If the stock goes up 15, all we make is 10. Oh, boo-hoo, all right? But if the stock loses 15%, guess what? All we're going to lose is five. All right. Now, that is what we call skew. We've added 
skew, and this increases the expectancy. Do you remember how uh, Ralph Vince gave a winning game to his players? Well, the winning game was a game that had positive expectancy. <clears throat> and what we're doing here is we're increasing our expectancy because part of the expectancy equation is taking into account how much you could lose. And it's the only part of the equation that you can actually control like a freak. Okay, you can control it like a like an OCD control freak. Here it is. I'm making sure that no matter what happens to the stock, even if it goes to zero, the most I can possibly lose is five percent. Okay, and so now we're going to go into a practical example. This is this is something my good friend uh, Mike Chepka did about a year ago. Uh, we're not going to give the most spectacular example. I'm just going to give a you know a common example. So here it is. Uh, Mike got into uh, the uh, radioactive profit machine. Oh, you know what? I, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I actually uh, this is a more recent example. Okay, I was going to show you one from last year, but uh, but no, this is uh, this year kind of a thing. Okay, so CAT Caterpillar. Uh, the stock price was at 84.20 back on uh, back in February, and we had an 87.50 put option invested. Okay, now you might look at that and say, well, okay, that 87.50 put option is higher than the uh, the actual present price of the stock. Yes, that's right. What that means is that this put option is in the money. Uh, another way of saying is that, that is that I'm putting some of this capital on deposit, and I'm guaranteed to get it back. Take a look. $91.80 is our total cost basis, but we're guaranteed out of that $91.80 to at least be able to get back $87.50. Okay? Because of the $87.50 put, we're guaranteed to get back at least $87.50. So what's at risk? What's at risk is the $4.30 time value that is uh, in this put option okay we have actually solved for the time value now I'm gonna pause for just a minute and I'm gonna mention that most folks will tell me uh, okay Kurt well why can't I just go buy a long call option it'll cost me about four dollars and thirty cents okay well yeah it'll cost you about four dollars and thirty cents but what most people forget to do is take four dollars and thirty cents and also add eighty seven dollars and fifty cents into a, an interest bearing account and not touch it that is what would make these truly equivalent positions okay is, is if you took capital you put it into an interest bearing account and you left it alone and did nothing with it and also bought this call option that would be the equivalent position to this married put Okay? Uh, and a lot of folks forget that. They forget that they're risking 100% of their capital if they don't. So what we've done here is we've introduced skew. Do you remember all we did when we went to uh, uh, this deal, all we did was instead of risking all of our capital, okay, 100% of our capital and bankrupting ourselves, we would just risk 10% of the position and we do very well. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're doing here is forcing an ideal position size. And again, every stock has its own volatility signature. So guess what? Whenever a stock is more volatile, the pricing of the put is going to change in such a way that you're going to risk uh, less. Okay, You're going to take a smaller position. And if it's less volatile, you'll be able to take a larger position. It's kind of cool. This actually paints you into a corner where you're risking the ideal amount okay so that's our beginning and what we're doing is we're keeping our risk down to 5% or less okay now here's what I want to do I just want to ask you a simple question think about what I just showed you we have unlimited upside potential in this uh, stock we don't know if it'll go up or down we have unlimited potential but we cannot lose more than 4.7% I want to ask you out of your trades last year, if if you had painted yourself into a corner to where you could not possibly lose more than 5% of any play that you got into, but you left your upside open, would it have been a better year? Okay, let's let's just think about this. I just want you to be real honest with yourself and with me and, and, and uh, tell me what do you think? Okay, do you think, well, no. 
limiting my risk to 5% wouldn't have helped. Or, well, yeah, you know, I might have still lost last year, but I would have lost less. Or do you think, you know what, <laughs> this would be kind of a game changer. I lost last year, but I would have won if I never took any hits of more than 5%. Okay, and then finally, you might even think, uh, I did well last year, but I would have done even better if these losses hadn't cut into my pockets. Okay, all right, let me leave that up for about another five seconds. And three, two, one close okay so uh, not everybody got to vote I know that some of you are calling in instead of uh, instead of attending live okay or I mean you're attending live but you're uh, but you're not on the computer you're just calling in okay but for for folks at the computer I actually didn't have anybody say well that wouldn't help me at all <laughs> I had eight percent say you know what I may have lost last year but I would have won if I'd have done that and 33 percent said I lost last year uh, I'm sorry uh, let me start over. 8% said I lost last year, but I wouldn't have lost as much. There we go. Okay, but 33% said I lost last year, but I would have won if I'd have done that. So that would be a game changer for those guys. And then 58% said I did well last year, but I would have done even better if I'd have just practiced this deal. Okay, uh, let me just ask, how much better? How much better off would you be? Would you be the same? Can you honestly claim, well, you know what, I didn't have any losses greater than last, greater than 5% last year, so it would be the same. Okay, maybe some of you already practiced my uh, uh, redacted profit machine. Okay, or would you have saved or made enough to, uh, you know, be ahead by about $339, and there's a reason why I chose that number. <laughs> okay, would some of you be ahead by $1,000 or more? Or would this have made uh, a five thousand dollar or better difference last year? Okay, I'm going to only leave this up for about another three seconds because I don't want to spend all of our time with polls. Okay, but let me go ahead and close. And uh, yeah, looky there. So we got ten percent saying, "Hey, I would have yeah saved or made enough to be ahead by three hundred thirty nine dollars." Fifty percent, I'd be ahead by a thousand dollars or more, and forty percent. This would have made a $5,000 difference last year. Wow. Okay. So listen, if if all you got out of today's webinar here so far, if all you got was this idea, this setup, then I've just saved you $1,000 or $5,000. Or if you think of it, you're probably going to trade for more than, uh, you know, another year. <laughs> you're probably going to trade for five or 10 or 20 more years. And if that's the case, well, you know, for those of you that uh, would have made at least five thousand dollars more, and you're going to trade for twenty more years, I just made you hundred grand. Okay, you can send your uh, uh, fee to me. <laughs> just kidding. All right, but here's the deal: <clears throat> this four dollars and thirty cents—that's the difference between what you spent and what you are guaranteed back. This four dollars and thirty cents is all that we're risking, and in this case, it's just five percent. But what we can do with this is we can reduce it. Okay. Again, here we are with the 4.7%, all right, but we can reduce it. Now, some folks would be wondering, why are you buying a put option so far away in time? If you noticed, I was buying a, an August put option, and that was back in uh, February. Okay, So this is an option that hasn't expired yet. Here we are in May. This option has not expired yet, Okay, and yet uh, uh, several months have gone by. Well, here's the deal. You might think that buying a put far away in time is more expensive, but it's really not. And here's why. Time value falls off very slowly at first in any option. And if your intent is to only hold for a month, guess what? You still can just hold for a month. You could buy a put option that's eight months away, ten months away, four months away, and only hold for one month. If you want, it's okay. You have that option. See? Okay? But you still buy a put option that's far out in time. Why? Well, because the uh, the the what do you call the the decay of the time value of that option, which by the way is the only thing that we're risking, right? The only thing that we're risking in the first place is the time value of the option. That falls off very slowly at first. So if your stock is going up, great. Okay. Uh, if your stock is going down or sideways, well, you're only going to lose a tiny amount of that value. 
In fact, if the stock goes down enough, your option value is going to increase quite a bit, and you'll be able to get out at a better, uh, a better, better loss. I mean, there's no good loss, but you'll be able to get out at a better loss than the the five percent that I showed. What if you do a 30-day put option like most people do? Most folks will buy a put option that's close in time, but we know that time value falls off very, very quickly. And also what most people do is they buy an out-of-the-money put option. So when they buy an out-of-the-money put option, that means it's all time value. So that time value is eroding very, very quickly. And you know what? Some folks even do well with this when they buy stocks and a, a put option that uh, is losing value quickly. Some folks even do well with this, but we want to have better protection for longer, and that's why uh, I buy a put option that's far away in time. It's more expensive on the surface, okay? It costs more, but the amount of value that would decay is less, okay? And I don't intend to hold it for the whole time. Now, we already did this. I, I, I said uh, to confirm the truth of what I'm saying, think back to your record. Would the radioactive profit machine change it? You had the same picks in the same time, but you never had any losses of greater than 5%. Well, you know, we had uh, uh, folks say that uh, it would have made a big difference. All right. We had folks say that, um, uh, let's see here, 8% said I lost last year, but I would have lost less. Okay, 33% would have changed a losing year into a winning year, and 58% would have taken a winning year and made it even winninger. All right, so <laughs> that's uh, that's what we're looking at here, folks. Okay, now, so what's different now? Well, the first thing that's different now is this skew. The old trader's maxim of cutting losers short and letting winners run is actually being put to use, and that's the first thing, but that's not the only thing. Oh, we've already done this. I, I'm gonna. I'm not sure why this uh, poll is there. It's out of order. But what I want to do is I want to talk to you about my good friend Mike. Okay, let me uh, blast through this here real quick. These slides could have been uh, useful earlier on, couldn't they? Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Okay, so here's my good friend Mike Chepka. Now, uh, what I wanted to tell you about Mike, remember we said earlier Mike was the uh, director of options education. I called in over at Power Options. I called into Power Options where I was a customer, and I said, look, I need to have uh, different parameters on the Mary Put search because of the way that I trade. And can you help me set that up? And Mike looked at my setup. He saw that I was going to not lose more than 5%, but... He said, Kurt, you know, I see what you're trying to do, and it's a good idea to not lose too much money, but I don't see how you're going to win. Well, after Mike uh, began using my method, uh, I, I think I already told you at the beginning here, uh, in 2008, it was not a moment too soon, right? <laughs> he began using it in 2008, and uh, the market experienced a crash, and, and uh, he came out of that crash pretty much unscathed. Okay, lost six tenths of one percent uh, for the year in his positions that uh, that he traded radioactively. Okay, and so uh, uh, here's a position that did well. Mike got into Silver Wheaton, 300 shares plus three put options. Now he made 58.9 percent, and that's not on that's not 58.9 percent on a long call. You understand? That's 58.9 percent based on all the capital that he put into long stock, all the capital that he put into the put option that protects it, and funds that he added afterwards with zero risk. There's a special technique that we call the ATM machine where you can bulletproof your stock, and that's something that Mike did. He was able to add money and then add some more money and then add some more money with zero risk. And uh, believe it or not, when he got out, he got out with a 58.9% return on all monies invested. Kind of cool. He made himself what we call bulletproof because one month into that position, the SLW position, he no longer could lose any money. Now, here's the deal. 
I'd like to also talk to you about his losers because in that same 12-month period where he did so well with Silver Wheaton, he also got into uh, TLM, Talisman Energy, and Talisman Energy stock lost 50%. What do you think Mike's loss was? His loss was 4.5%. Okay, and by the way, that was the biggest loss of that 12-month period. The biggest loss was four and a half percent, even though the stock cut in half. Kind of cool. Okay, now here's the deal: if you have 50% losses and 100% wins, you'll never get ahead. We already showed this with the uh, trade simulator tool. Okay, but but four and a half percent losses. Coupled with 58.9% wins, you do very well. Now, I'm not going to say that every one of Mike's uh, gains was a 58.9% gain. That's that's not true. Okay, But let's do consider this. The 4.5% loss was the biggest loss of the year. So in this equation that gives you expectancy, okay, number of wins times average win minus number of losses times average loss, if Mike was able to control this like a freak, Control this like a complete OCD, <laughs> out of his head kind of, you know what, Mike didn't take any losses more than 4.5%. Most of them were less, for that, less than that, okay? Well, guess what? It changes the expectancy, and when you change your expectancy, you change how much you're going to take out of your account, okay? So Mike was able to slay the martingale, and you can too, okay? So we've already said what is different now. What is different is the skew. But what else is different now? Well, within the context of your radioactive profit machine, you're able to do the income methods. And there's 12 different ways to generate income. Now, you've probably been familiar with at least two. One is selling covered calls. But a side effect of selling covered calls is that you limit your upside potential. And that's no good. Another way of generating income you've probably thought of is, you know, uh, having dividends, okay? But you don't have any control over dividends. You don't know what's going to happen with dividends, okay? So um, the, uh, the other 10 ways are kind of worth looking into, I think, okay? And so we're going to show real quick, I'm going to show income methods. The income methods are used to ex advance uh, or enhance the skew. So, for example, let's say our, our uh, cost basis here is represented by the dotted line. The most that we could lose here is represented by the uh, bottom line, okay? And the most that we could win is, well, it's unlimited, okay? What if we were to use an income method and reduce our cost basis? then we'd still have our skew in place, but it would be enhanced. Kind of cool, okay? Um, here's, uh, here's what we did with Caterpillar, okay? So we've got Caterpillar, uh, and we showed this uh, earlier, just the setup. The setup was 84.20 for the stock, 760 for the put, and we had uh, less than 5% at risk. Now, take a look at this. In March, what we're doing is selling an $85 call option, and simultaneously buying an 8750 call option. Now, for those of you that do spread trades, what is that thing called? Can you tell me? I'm going to go ahead and look at the questions, by the way. Ah, see, Dan is uh, a, a little misguided here. Dan, uh, it says we will not make money until the stock is above 91.8. We may not realize any real gain. Okay. That is not true. That is not true. Dan, as your stock goes up, if you have a put option that's very far away in time, as your stock goes up, your put will come down, yes, but it will come down very, very slowly. And the reason for that is because that's, that put is so far away in time, it's relatively unaffected. Meanwhile, your uh, stock going up is, is uh, guaranteeing you a gain. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to reduce our risk even further. Okay, all right. So uh, Jill said bull call spread. You're very close. Okay, Jill, this is a bear call spread. A bear call spread is where you sell a lower strike and with it buy uh, a uh, higher strike and you get to keep the difference. Okay, in this case, eighty cents. Okay, so that's eighty cents difference. Now, uh, what that does is it reduces the cost basis. Okay. Now, if that uh, uh, put, con I'm sorry, if that stock continues up, you're going to be making money. 
Okay, but uh, if uh, you your uh, bear call spread expires worthless, you're going to keep the money, but you're going to still be in a position where the stock and the put guarantee that you can't get hurt, and you're reducing your cost basis on your stock. In fact, we're able to reduce your cost basis to uh, zero. All right, that's called bulletproofing. Okay, you apply the income methods to lower your risk or your cost basis or both, and you may end up with a merry put with all the time value paid for. Now, this is called bulletproofing, and uh, it's actually a lot more common than you would think. We're able to bulletproof quite a bit more often than you think, but still have the upside left intact. Okay, all right. Now, uh, I had uh, somebody send in a stock, okay, NKE at a cost basis of $98. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at NKE, and uh, we're going to use the Power Options platform. I've got to sign in, so give me just a second. Client login. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm not an employee of Power Options, uh, but uh, I will be giving you a uh, link that you can follow to to get two free weeks of power options if you want it. There's no, uh, uh, what do you call, there's no uh, credit card required for this for this option trial. Okay, so NKE, this fellow had uh, picked up NKE, Nike, uh, 100 shares. I'm just going to put in 100 shares. He didn't say if it was 100 shares, but he said $98 uh, for the cost basis. Okay, great. Whoops, I didn't... Uh, didn't, uh, didn't add anything. Okay, so the stock is up, not extremely high, but it is up a little bit from where he bought in. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out in time. Uh, what is today? It's uh, June the uh, 9th. June the 9th, okay. So July would be just one month, okay. October would be uh, what? August, September. Okay, so we got we got four months away. Okay, let's go four months away, and we'll go slightly in the money. Okay, slightly in the money, which would be this $105 put option. Okay, now today, because he's legging in, okay, because uh, you're spending 98 on the stock, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, weeks ago or so, uh, but today we're getting the put option. Uh, what's going to happen is you're spending $105.20 total, right, for a for a um, position that guarantees uh, 105 back. Okay. Now I want you to take a look at this maximum risk of $20. That's that's what's uh, left. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply an income method. Okay. So the fellow that that uh, supplied this for me, Ramek. Okay, Ramek, take a look at this. I think you're going to really dig it. What we're doing is we're buying a put option, and essentially we're paying. Uh, a deposit down. Okay, the seven dollars and twenty cents we're guaranteed most of that back. <laughs> we're guaranteed seven dollars of it back. Okay, uh, in your case. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to pay for it. And watch how. Uh, we're going to go out to July. Let's do July. And what we'll do is we'll sell the hundred and five dollar call option while simultaneously buying the hundred and ten dollar call option. Well, what's this going to do? Well. When we do that, we're going to collect a credit. And when we collect a credit, that credit is going to offset the cost of our stock or offset the cost of the put or, or whatever. Okay, So now we have negative risk. If you'll notice, 7 tenths of 1% uh, negative risk, or we're guaranteed, in other words, uh, $71. So that means if the stock crashes, here it is down at the bottom left here. That's a crash. If it crashes, we're going to make $71. Okay, <clears throat> which is darn tight better than losing money, you know, starting from 98 <laughs> and the stock goes down, <clears throat> we could get hurt. Okay, now this little heartbeat here, this is because of doing the bear call spread. As long as the stock stays below $105, we're going to keep that. Uh, premium that we generate here of almost a dollar. Okay, we were going to keep this premium that we generated, and so it's a riskless spread trade. Uh, our put option may go down in value, 
But uh, guess what? We've been paid to own this call. So if the stock continues up, even though the put is losing value, uh, we still have an infinite and unlimited upside. So does that beat the snot out of covered calls or what? This is just one of 12 income methods, all right? But again, uh, we took a stock where we still had risk, and now we made it negative risk by capturing the credit from the bull, uh, bear call spread. Now, if we did the bear call spread just by its lonesome like this, that would actually introduce quite a bit of risk, wouldn't it? But because of the context... The context is we already own the stock because of the context. Guess what? We can do that bear call spread, leave our upside open, and definitely keep the credit from it. Kind of exciting. What do you guys think about that? I'm just going to ask in a poll here. What what do you think about that? Okay. What do you think of the income method that I showed you? Uh, the fact that uh, you can do a riskless spread trade is pretty impressive. Okay. Uh, but was it worth spending some time here and learning about today? Right there, I showed how to take, uh, oh, it's 93 cents, how to take 93 cents credit risklessly. That's a darn sight better than a dividend payment. By the way, could you do this again in August? And could you do this again in September? And could you do this again in the, the uh, month of October where your put is supposed to expire? Yes. Okay. If the stock goes down, you'll be very, very happy that you bought a put. If your stock goes up, you're paying for your put with multiple instances of an income method. This is exciting. Okay. Uh, I have uh, Timothy asking, can you do this with weekly spreads? Yeah, you can do it uh, weekly. Certainly doable. I don't uh, prefer to do weekly spreads because uh, <clears throat> I like to get a, a bigger chunk. When there's only a week left of expiration or two weeks left of expiration, there's there's not as big of a uh, amount of premium that you can capture. But yeah, you can still do that. Okay, cool. So, nice poll. Thank you guys for participating. Let me go ahead and close that and share the results. 27% say that was wild. I didn't know you could do a risk of spread trade. 73% this one trade made it worth all the time that I spent here today. Yeah, yeah, it did. I, I just paid you 93 bucks. <laughs> I mean, that was a 93 cent credit. That's riskless. Uh, hello. Uh, could you use that uh, as a monthly uh, little bump uh, in your account? Yeah, you could. Okay, 55% say, I want to know more about riskless spreads like this. Yeah, this isn't the sexiest one. Okay, there's there's quite a bit uh, more fun things to learn in the blueprint. 27%, um, can, can I do what you just showed in an IRA? Yes, you can. Yes, you can do this in an IRA or similar account. Uh, uh, even a very stodgy broker like, uh, like Scott Trade, if you own stock, you know, they won't let you do a spread trade, right? But if you own stock and also own a put, you can do the short call, which they'll look at as a covered call, and you can also do a long call. And so you can do the spread trade even in an account where they don't allow spread trades. Kind of exciting. Why? Because you already own the stock, and so they look at it as a covered call coupled with buying a long call. You have to pay two, uh, two uh, commissions in that case, all right? But uh, – uh, anyway, uh, you can do this with even the stodgiest of brokers. Okay, 45% say, I like that it reduced the risk. Can it actually go to zero? Yeah, that's actually, it's not a unicorn. It's not something that you hear about but uh, have never seen. Um, we bulletproof stocks all the time. And bulletproof means that we've simply captured more premium <clears throat> than we have invested in the time value of the put. And so the put guarantees uh, our exit. And the, uh, the stock still has unlimited upside. So really, really cool. Okay, so uh, other questions. I, I saw a, a number of questions come through here. Uh, Dan uh, said we won't make money until the stock goes above our uh, cost basis. No, it's not true. It's not true. Um, because of the way that uh, far away put options behave. Okay, <clears throat> cool. All right, guys, let me go ahead and, and uh, uh, jump back into here. Hopefully, I closed the poll. Did I close the poll? I hope I did. Okay. 
All right, very good. So I'm going to just ask a real simple question, okay? We're, we're four minutes past the hour. Uh, I'm going to ask, what is the single biz biggest objection that you would have to getting the Radioactive Trading Home Study Kit? The Radioactive Trading Home Study Kit will show you all 12 of these setups or all 12 of these income methods, plus uh, how to do setups that keep you out of trouble. That even if you pick a really bad stinker, uh, you can't lose more than 5% of the capital that you put into that. Okay? All right. And I'm just going to leave that up there for a second. And uh, while that's happening, I'll pull up another screen here. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so uh, so I've had uh, most folks have voted. Not everybody's had a chance to cast their vote, but I'll leave it up for another five seconds. And this is our final poll. Okay. All right. So let me close that in three, two, one. Close. All right. So, uh, Forty percent say, you know what? I think it's pricey at six hundred dollars. Well, um, just think about this. Okay. Uh, have I saved you some money? <laughs> some folks said that uh, I just um, made you $93, $93, right? Because I, sh I showed the uh, setup of a riskless spread trade, a riskless spread trade uh, that will get you $0.93 cents in a month, okay? 90, uh, $93 <clears throat> on just a single uh, contract traded. Could you do that for the next six months? Would that pay for it? I think so. Okay. Now, another thing about it being pricey, what if it had a 100% money back guarantee? Then would the price objection go completely away? I think so. I think so. 20% say, I'm scared of getting my hopes up again and not being delivered on it. Okay. I get that. I get that. I'm scared of not getting uh, delivered uh, when I've got my hopes up. Okay. Well, guys, I did the same thing. I, I went to one of these weekend cover call trading seminars. It cost $3,000 to attend, $3,500 for the software, $100 a month for the alert service that they were going to give, and I ended up going broke. Why? Because I had just one strategy, and it was flawed, and that was a strategy of selling covered calls <laughs> using margin. That's, that's exactly what uh, they taught me, and I get it. I understand. But the thing is, with the 100% money back guarantee, uh, even if you uh, get your hopes up, okay, and it's not what you thought, well, shoot, I'll just say paper trade and see if the kit would not pay for itself. And just paper trade. See if the kit would not pay for itself. We had a number of folks say, hey, uh, my trading would have been greatly impacted last year if I'd only known this setup. Okay, and that was before I showed one of the 12 income methods. Okay, all right, 40% say I w I'm waiting for a sale or special offer. There are no sales. We don't do them anymore. I did a sale one time in 2007 back when the blueprint only had uh, six income methods instead of 12. We did that one-day sale. Uh, people were angry that had bought the day before, and uh, uh, other, other folks didn't feel like they were being served well enough um, that bought that day because we had a, a huge spike. And I had a manpower problem as far as support. I wanted to make sure that we support everyone that buys uh, the blueprints or the home study kit. Uh, they get support. And um, so anyway, for that reason, we no longer do sales. We haven't done sales in uh, eight years, and we will not begin. Okay, so there you go. All right, uh, <clears throat> let me go ahead and close that poll. I had a couple of questions come in. Let's uh, get to the questions here real quick like. Richard says, uh, no money to spend. We are in a depression, Sonny. <laughs> Richard, I don't know about that. I, I own three businesses, and all three are thriving. Uh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> it's certainly your your call, you know, uh, if you don't want to spend uh, spend money on the, the blueprint. that That is fine. Uh, I won't argue with you. I will tell you that uh, when uh, re recessions happen, I don't participate. Being a small business owner, I'm in control of that. Uh, Jill says, the blueprint is priceless. I've invested in my education with lots of books, seminars, at hundreds of times the price, but none has been as valuable as the blueprint. I know I can do this with success. Jill, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I know that you're a recent purchaser of the blueprint. I didn't realize that you had, had all that other background. 
and uh, so thanks for thanks for the review. I appreciate that. All right. Okie dokie. Well, folks, uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close up the uh, uh, webinar here. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll forward through a couple of these slides. Hopefully, you can see the one that's up there right now. It says, quick reminder, you may not get all this in the first viewing, and that's okay. You know, uh, Go ahead and uh, <clears throat> if you are a Blueprint owner, use your support, support at radioactivetraining.com. Uh, if you um, are brand new to radioactive trading, uh, keep coming back. And, and, and go ahead and uh, watch this video. We're going to post this video. It's live today, June 9th, uh, but then we're going to post it, okay? The income methods reduce the gap between what uh, you could possibly lose and what you've spent, okay? And uh, you reduce the gap enough, uh, we have this phenomenon of bulletproofing. And uh, folks, I like to do a bulletproof offer. If I'm going to talk about bulletproofing, I like for my offer to be bulletproof, and that's how... Uh, we play things, okay? All right, so here's what to do next after this primer on limiting risk and bulletproofing stocks. Uh, the next step that I would take, if it, if it were me, I would just look back at my own trading record. Look back at your trading record and say, uh, now, if I never had a loss of greater than 5%, would it have been different last year, okay? And, you know, honestly, you could have had the same picks and the same timing, but uh, maybe a better outcome. Maybe win more or maybe lose less, <clears throat> or maybe just a little bit of both, okay? Uh, secondly, consider how different things might be if you also took income but did not limit your upside, okay? And then uh, finally, uh, I'm going to ask that you grab yourself a free trial to the service that I use to find and manage these kinds of trades. It's Power Options at powerup.com forward slash RAT. They'll give you – RAT stands for Radioactive Trading. Uh, you will get uh, two free weeks – of the uh, service that I used when I showed the, uh, well, let, let's just jump into it here real quick. You get uh, two free weeks <clears throat> of this uh, of this platform where you can go and search for the married put, okay, and and you can uh, uh, take a look at what your uh, combined position would be if you had a married put in place and also one of the income methods. Okay, uh, this is the the uh, folks that I use for finding and managing all of my trades. And uh, there's no credit card that's required, okay? I would just uh, uh, sign in here, powerup.com forward slash RAT. Give me your email address, and you get two free weeks of the service that I use, okay? All right, and then uh, finally, the last thing that I would do after going to Power Options and getting a free uh, trial, I'd pick up the Blueprint, okay? If you think you uh, do well to learn the other income methods, pick up the Blueprint at radioactivetrain.com. And uh, it's 339 oops, 339 for the Blueprint. It's $600 for the Home Study Kit, which includes the Blueprint, but also uh, audiovisual uh, CDs. And again, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> a bulletproof offer. <clears throat> By bulletproof offer, I mean that, uh, you know, normally <clears throat> if you were to invest in a, in a program and it didn't work out for you, you'd be out that money. But in our case, if you invest in the program, uh, you're either going to make money uh, or you're not, and if, if you don't think that you're going to, all right, go ahead and send back the, the blueprint. We'll reimburse every dime, okay? Very good. All right, so folks, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here, uh, and uh, it's been uh, fabulous uh, talking with you. If you think of a question that, uh, as often happens, you know, you think of the perfect thing to say after we hang up the phone. If you think of a question that you'd like to ask me, send it to support at radioactivetrain.com. be very pleased to, to uh, handle it for you, okay? All right, and so we'll see you out there. Thanks so much there, folks. Happy trading, and bye for now.